to this Illinois team. Yeah, you look at more of a well-balanced offense with those additions to the Fighting Illini lineup. Chris Thomas in his eighth year as Illinois' head coach, hoping to bring this program back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2021, missing out in the last two seasons. Illinois losing both of its games last weekend against potent competition on the road against Penn State and Purdue. That was after the big weekend they had here, the back-to-back -back wins, especially over USC, and then coming back the next day and beating Ohio State in a sweep. That win over USC really, I think, cementing the NCAA tournament profile for the Fighting Illini, but they cannot afford to stumble down the stretch. And then Laura again for Rutgers. We talked to Caitlin Schweighoffer before the match today. Very young team. The average age, they think they have it at like 19.2, uh, I think for the starting lineup specifically. So it's a very young team. And uh, even Chris Thomas said this, they, they are better than the record indicates. So you can't take the day off as you look at Thomas here getting ready for this one. Yeah, they are. And you also consider that they have been fighting injuries. They've had 11 different lineups in the Big Ten Conference competition so far. Here's Schweighoffer, fifth year at Rutgers, 11th year as a head coach. Spent uh, five years at LaSalle, one year in between at Northeastern before coming to Rutgers. She's looking forward to the spring, hopefully, when her team could be fully healthy and Start to make some big steps for this program as the opening serve for the Scarlet Knights from Lily Bolin, one of those freshmen in the starting lineup. of early free ball for the Scarlet Knights and getting the opening point is that freshman Natalie Robinson who's hitting 253, six foot four from Hudson, Ohio. Yeah, and she has a really quick arm. She's really good at being able to see the block in front of her and make that decision on which angle to go. Brooke Mosier will feed Terry into the Rutgers block, something that they have been doing fairly well this season. Going down the line, though, is freshman Laney Smith, who has played every single set this year out of Durham, North Carolina. And one thing that Laney Smith adds to this lineup is that pin-to-pin -pin dimension. She is in the front row along with Raina Terry, so that's keeping opponents guessing on where the ball is going to go. Martinez Mundo with the first serve for Illinois today. It was an overpass, and, and the point goes to Illinois as it's a violation there at the net officially by Rutgers. Back row block. 2-1 Illinois. Martinez Mundo from San Juan, Puerto Rico, the grad transfer from Eastern Illinois, where she played four years. Scramble by Rutgers. And Illinois now on top, 3-1. to one. Illinois serve can cause a lot of havoc on the court, just being aggressive. Obviously, this young team, different lineup with the Scarlet Knights just trying to get some rhythm going. Illinois is third in the Big Ten in aces per set. Big part of uh, what they're able to do against defenses. Terry went over the block, and that hit the line. Going cross court, Raina Terry, a grad student, racked up over 2,000 kills in her career. As you watch Raina Terry, she can see that block and she can cut it just right outside that sharp cross court. Another serve from Christina Martinez Mundo. Kinkello with the attack. Back row, there was Hernandez. Terry with the change up tip. Kidkilla again goes cross court. And Alyssa Kidkilla has her first kill. So now 52 away. She has a chance with the three matches left after today becoming Rutgers first ever 1,000 kill performer in the rally scoring era. Mosier to Terry. And down in front of the libero, Kenzie Deerstad. Raina Terry's second kill. And Laura, we've talked over the last two, three years with Raina Terry, the changes to her game offensively. 
Offensively, she can hit anywhere the block is not. And even if the block is there and tries to meet her, she just has a really great toolbox of shots to be able to score points. Tooled off the block by Avery Jesuits. And keep in mind, within the Big Ten, the block can be really tall. You see Wisconsin with 6'8", six, 6'9", six, blockers. So Raina Terry's been able to adjust and see all kinds of different block setups. Jesuits, another freshman in the Rutgers starting lineup. Kenzie Deerstad, only a sophomore with the serve. On the slide, Philpott, and it's blocked by Jesuits. And Rutgers back within one, five, four. Look at the Rutgers block. And Jesuits lining up perfectly, following, not going too far out to the pen to follow the swing. It's a great block. Caitlin Schweighoffer telling us is that's a service error that the team that she sees in game is different than what she sees in practice, hoping that some of the practice performance translates more onto the floor, but saying part of that is to do with it being a young team. Yeah, that young maturity, getting used to the game experiences and how to form more of a team together when there's just been so many injuries. They run the quick. And went out of bounds for Zora Hardison. So Illinois up by three with Raina Terry on the serve. 217 career aces leading the Illinois record books. On the serve receive was Deerstad. Kinkilla now on the right side. So we've seen Alyssa Kinkilla from each side of the net now with the termination. And Kinkella is so good, just like Raina Terry, being able to read the block, adjust, and then go with what the block gives you. And we see the line shot. The block was taken cross, and she went right down the line. Now Kinkella's back to serve. Does have 18 aces on the year. Martinez Bundo to Mosher. Hernandez dumped over on second contact. Hernandez, deer stab the dig. Rutgers running a 6-2. Terry with the dig on the attack by Jesuits. Good sprawling play in the back by Vicentine. And we continue on, Lily Berry with the dig. Terry from the back row, and Rutgers cannot track it down. Our longest point of the day, Illinois takes a three-point advantage. Illinois had managed to try all sides of the front net with Mosier going out, finally going to Raina Terry out the back row where she is a weapon just as much as she is in the front row. We see Reagan Riley serving, the senior from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. One year at North Dakota State, two years at South Dakota State. He's played in every single match. This is set by Ali Borellis, one of the two in the 6-2, back into the lineup today after missing four games due to injury. Illinois will try to take advantage of this situation. Hernandez. Jesuits. Mosier will take a swing, and that's down for the point. Brooke Mosier, the redshirt junior. We had Illinois' first triple-double in over 25 years earlier this year. Well, Brooke Mosier can swing the ball, proving that she is not just a setter, and Reagan Riley really paying attention to where to go with Mosier. Another serve from Riley. Jesuits, excuse me, that attack by Anna Hartman. 10-5, Illinois, so Reagan Riley going on a little run right now. At the service line. Deerstad to the floor. Back row, it's Jesuits, and that's going to go over our head into the stands. Side out for the Scarlet Knights, and Jesuits with her second kill. Jesuits just being a freshman, she has the arm, quick arm, just like Kinkella on the outside. She's able to swing from the right just as much as she's gotten some kills on the left. From Plymouth, Minnesota, out of Wayzata High School. 
And now Jesowitz is back to serve. And into the net for the service error. Second one for Rutgers thus far. And those could be tough points because those are points Illinois is not having to work for to get this score, and that lead just increases. I want to interesting to see what Brooke Mosier does here on the serve. She brings back the jump serve, and that is the case. Dealing with a bit of a lower back issue that's kind of kept her from that dangerous jump serve, but Rutgers does a good job against it, and they get the quick side out. Well, Brooke Mosier's jump serve definitely adds some competitiveness to the serving game, but the quick middle attack from the Scarlet Knights was too much. So our hardest in with it, and now back to serve. That'll sail too far. And Illinois back in front by five. Finding a line eye, six and two at Huff Hall this year. The 17 and nine overall record. Avery Hernandez, transfer from Northwestern with the serve. Get into the block by Hartman. And Illinois with a net violation. Laney Smith was trying to do something with that second ball and ends up getting her back into the net. Let me see another replay. Oh, she stepped over she stepped the over center the line, court. Yeah. I, but when I saw the call, it looked like it was more of a net violation. 12-8. Served by Bolin and the ace on the board for the Scarlet Knights. They average 1.37 per set, which has them 13th in the Big Ten. Just gonna remember now out of 18 teams. And follows it up with the service error. 13-9 Illinois here in set one. Unfortunately for Rutgers, that is just an additional four points that Illinois, again, hasn't had to work for. Christina Martinez-Mundo back on the serve. Down to play was Jesuits. Free ball for the fighting Illini. Mosier, the quick for Philpott. So much of the game is about that serve and pass, but making a good pass off of the free ball, free ball, and you see Philpott, great transition middle, and she was up and the ball was down before the Scarlet Knights could react. Philpott a couple of weeks ago, the first Illinois player to be a freshman in the week in the Big Ten since Raina Terry back in uh, the spring of 2021. And we mentioned the Scarlet Knights youth, but Illinois has their own youth up at the front net with Philpott being a freshman. 15-9 Illinois. We've got a timeout on the floor. We'll step aside quickly and be back in a moment. You're watching Big Ten Volleyball on Big Ten Plus. That they're bad. It's just the youth and getting used. They, they graduated a lot last year as we see the kill once again by Philpott. Earlier it was closer to Brooke Mosier, the setter, now going a little bit further on that 31. Philpott two for three on the day. She's sixth in the Big Ten in hitting percentage as that serve goes long. Side out for Rutgers, 16-10 Illinois in the first set. Coming off of the timeout, the side out percentage is really key right now as Rutgers 42%, Illinois siding out at 70%. Jump serve by Vizantine, leads Rutgers and aces. Terry, that went off the net, not touched by the block, then out of bounds, so point goes to Rutgers. And it's 16 to 11. So Vizantine, junior from Houston, eighth in the Big Ten and aces per set. Mosier. Philpott had it blocked back, and Scarlet Knights with three straight points. Yeah, Natalie Ronison really focusing on Philpott. We saw the two kills earlier when matched up together. This time, staying in front, just like middles. You're always moving, but keeping an eye on where the ball's going. Laney Smith cuts it by the block. It, it grazed Natalie Robinson, but... 
It works out for the Fighting Illini to go back up by five at 17 to 12. And back to serve is Lily Berry, sophomore from Emden, Illinois. Playing three rotations for the Fighting Illini. The back set over to Kinkilla into the block of Terry and Philpot. And that is the first block point of the match for Illinois. Oftentimes, Illinois, their blocking is talked about because of how good they are with their bunch blocking system of being patient and then going to the hitter. And Natalie Robinson will get one back. The freshman from Hudson, Ohio. We're hitting 253, but the blocking has been the biggest part of her game. She's had five or more blocks in 10 matches this year. Deerstad, the serve. Bozier sets up Raina Terry, and another ball that's in for Raina Terry. Highlight of Illinois, that was a short serve by the Scarlet Knights trying to cause some disruption, but you see Mosier on the floor and being able to get to Terry. Kill it. Can kill the attack. Hernandez off of the block. Can kill again. And finds the space on the floor. Alyssa Kidkilla from Melbourne, Australia. In the final season at Rutgers. Well, Kinkella is really good. And being able to notice that open spot on the Illinois side with a just nice, easy tip. Goes back to serve with her team trailing 19-14 in the first set. Mosher. From the back row, it's Terry. Deerstad with the up. Hit into the block, and Illinois gets to 20. 20 to 14. So much power coming from the back row with Raina Terry, and that just is a reason to really try and get a better dig off of that because the block for Illinois is ready and set up. Reagan Riley will serve, and it Deflected off of Hartman. Rutgers is able to get it over. Played in the middle by Kari Bohm. Now go to Mosier, and Mosier blocked by Jesuits. Jesuits handing out her own blocking. The freshman, she's had a good afternoon so far. This time picking up her second block for the afternoon. Her second and three block points overall for Rutgers. Allie Dutton, a freshman from Lafayette, Indiana, in to serve. Hernandez. Avery Hernandez makes it 21 to 15. And Avery Hernandez, the glue to this Illinois team, might not you know, wow you, but does, does a lot of things very good. Well, she came from Northwest. It's 22 to 15. Here oh, in set one. Adding to that blocking that the Fighting Illini have been able to demonstrate. There's one thing about the middles with Illinois. They are really good at blocking and being able to make the adjustments laterally. Mosier with the jump serve. Good swing by Hartman to the floor in the back went Terry. Hernandez goes down the line. Played up by uh, Borellis. And did that catch the block? No, it did not. And it's 23-15. Look at it. Uh, almost got the pinky of Laney Smith, but not called. 23-15, Illinois. There's a little extra on that one. Deerstad, good job on the receive and point Rutgers. Anna Hartman on the right side as you see another Rutgers lineup change just a little bit. Running the 6-2, so starting the game, we saw one right side with Setter in the back. This time rotation through, Hartman getting the kill. Zora Hardison back to serve, 23-16 Illinois. 
Avery Hernandez, no touch and out of bounds. One of the things that Caitlin Schweighoffer really hopes her team improves upon is, you know, late set situations. I mean, obviously right now they're down by six, but trying to close out each set better. Well, that competitive piece of being able to have that youth and understand how close. She did say a lot of times they're within five points of just how to close out a set or close out a match. So see Hernandez that time definitely catching the block. Set point, Illinois, 24 to 17. We apologize having a little bit of an issue with uh, the graphic on your screen there, but 24 to 18, Illinois now. Sometimes those machines, they just take a mind of its own. <laughs> Still set point, Illinois, up by six. Hopefully it's not the machines taking over. Served by Lily Bolin. Laney Smith, and that'll win set one for Illinois at 25. 218. The Fighting Illini, the first of two home games Friday, Saturday. Rutgers, the first of two road games Friday, Saturday. Illinois, they hit 376 in the first set. Rutgers only 088. And it's 25 18, Illinois, after one set of play. You're watching Big Ten Volleyball on Big Ten Plus. each but you look at the hitting percentages 276 by Illinois and 0 .088 for Rutgers and the service errors the four by Rutgers one with Illinois but the side out percentage the ability to stop the runs and the points Illinois 68 percent siding out 50 for Rutgers. Anna Hartman and Alyssa Kinkilla both with three kills in the first set and that's interesting to point out because Caitlin Schweighoffer looks at Anna Hartman as sort of the heir apparent to Alyssa Kinkilla. Says that Hartman is in a very similar spot in her career at this point as a sophomore as Kinkilla was a couple of years ago. Yeah, and that's a great matchup, especially when you look at the future for the Scarlet Knights and being able to continue to compete and build within the Big Ten. And Raina Terry with five kills in the first set to lead the fighting Illini. That 088 for Rutgers right now that matches what uh, Illinois' best defensive mark of the season was at Northwestern earlier this year held the Wildcats to just 088. Of course, that was for an entire match. Second set, 25-18 Illinois. Rutgers looking to. Well, they started the first set pretty strong as well and try to do very similar here in the second as well. And that is a great start for Rutgers. Just a nice high swing right in between the block of the Fighting Illini. Serving is Vicentine. She had three or more aces four times this year. Great serve to the floor went Mosier, tearing the swing, and that is heading out of bounds. They look at that really tough serve by Rutgers and then the ability for Raina Terry just to step in and pound away at the ball. Important side out. Christina Martinez Mundo back to serve. Three digs, one assist so far today. Had a couple of seasons of beach volleyball at Eastern Illinois University before transferring. Along with her four years of indoor play as Philpot and Terry combine for the block. This combination of Raina Terry and Philpot has proven to be really tough to beat. Look at the reach that Raina Terry back into the middle of the court. Deerstad on the serve receive. Jesuits into the block. And Illinois will pick up another point off of their block. Laura, I want to go back to Raina Terry, though, because 
She's had some of the offensive load taken off her plate this year, which has allowed her to focus more on her defense, her blocking, her digging, uh, and again, having her best season, saving it for her last season. Yeah, so much of that focus has always been on our offense. And yes, being able to train and get used to being that six rotation player, which adds a lot to Illinois because she can continue to attack from the back row. Long back set over to Kid Killa. Solo block attempt by Terry. And that'll be a net violation by the Illini. You Three to, give, to two. You have to give Kinkella credit. She just continues to swing away. She knows Raina Terry's right there and continues to try and terminate the ball. We'll get a quick look at it. Yep. See Illinois Terry, in yep. the net. Kenzie Deerstad serves it into the net for the fifth Rutgers service error. And again, Laura, you talk about this a lot with Illinois, but they have so many ways they put pressure on the opponent, the opposing team, serving a big part of it, uh, the blocking, and then just their team defense. So really, it's kind of every phase that you would you'd want. Yeah, we talked a lot earlier in Bob Mundo, but Lily Berry back there as well. Three rotations in the back row, and oftentimes it's just quiet. You don't notice it, but if you watch the hitter and then they get blocked, watch the defense. That's that hitter coverage that creates multiple opportunities for the Illinois offense. Terry putting it off the hands of Kinkilla there, and Lily Berry with another serve. Jesuits into the block, and... The Illinois block rolling now as they're up over six block points. And Phil Potts been in the here. middle of quite a few of those as she moves laterally so well across the net. Three straight points for the Fighting Illini. It's a set by Lily Bolin. The attack by Kid Killa. Now Terry. Battle at the net is won by Ashlyn Philpott. Philpott was there for that transition block coming off of the Reina Terry attack. But one thing that Mosier did for Illinois was she was really quick to set Terry when everything was out in chaos. And that really did lead to that overpass for Philpott to block. Fourth serve now for Barry. Bowling goes back set to Kid Killa, who ends the run with her sixth kill of the day. This has been a good matchup with Kinkella and Reina Terry, both trying to attack that left and right pin. See for the season, up over three kills per set for Kinkella. 227 hitting percentage. A slide, Philpott hit that into the net. These are important points for Rutgers as they try and piece together that side out percentage, not allowing Illinois to get on runs. Instead, they're forcing the runs. Another serve for Kid Killa. He's already the Rutgers rally scoring era points leader. As that's dropped down by Raina Terry. So often, Raina Terry just brings all the heat with her attacks. This time, just recognizing the middle of the court's open with a nice roll shot. Terry's one of those players on your notes chart that there just is not enough room for every note to possibly have for her. So much built up over her college careers as a solo block by Philpott to make it 9-4. Philpott once again demonstrating that blocking, the reach, the arms working independently. Deerstad on the serve receive. Jesuits had it blocked back. Hardison puts it over. Mosier goes to Philpott and Ashlyn Philpott. Her offensive game heating up now with her third kill. The defensive side with the blocking, but the quick transition out of the middle, not going all the way to the antenna for the slide, just inside, right behind Brooke Mosier. Phil Pont, that tag team joining Illinois from the state of North Carolina, uh, the Triangle Volleyball Club. 
Avery Hernandez with a cross-court finish. The junior from Bloomington, Illinois, about an hour down the road, transferred to Illinois from Northwestern, forces Rutgers into a timeout. 11-4 Illinois in set two. We'll be right back here on Big Ten Plus. Ten, way back in early September against Illinois State. Trying to Terry the serve. And a swing by Hartman. High set for Hernandez. And Avery Hernandez with back-to-back -back kills with a timeout in between. Both outsides for the fight in the line I have found. Swinging away works as just as good as just a nice tip over the block right now. Raina Terry continuing on the serve for Illinois. Getting down to the floor to play was Jesuits cut in front of the libero Deerstad. Hernandez, good block touch by the Scarlet Knights. Jesuits into the Illinois block. Back row Terry. And trying to save it. Here is Jesuits. And she went into the chairs here that uh, thankfully are padded, but I was concerned because she fell right towards where the steps were and luckily was able to brace herself before potentially hitting her head or her face on the steps over here. And you see Jesuits going all out and then trying to save the point. And that's a really important point because Illinois has been on this run. It was 11-4 at the timeout. They're siding out at 27% right now, so this was a hard-fought point. Hardison puts it over. Mosier on second contact. That setter vision can be a big changer, and that time Brooke Mosier recognizing that Zora Hardison was trying to get around the block in transition and led to Brooke Mosier being able to dump the ball. Going to see Georgia Lee check in. For Rutgers for the first time today. Sophomore from Phoenix. For another serve from Raina Terry. This is going to be Terry's seventh serve. It's a seven-point run. It's eight now. And Terry with the ace. Her first today. Her 54th of the season. The 218th of her career. Well, that sets us up beautifully to talk more about Raina Terry and the campaign that she has had this season. Of course, the career that she has had uh, at Illinois. Uh, already the career leader in aces, points, and kills in Illinois history. And uh, making a case to uh, be an All-American this season. There are those numbers. Of course, we don't have the up to you know the numbers added today. But uh, already coming in with a with a ton to her credit. And you consider Illinois has come away with two Olympians, and she is going to be the only Illinois player with over 2,000 kills. It just shows her career as being one for the books for sure, and she just has such a presence. So obviously a very strong case for the All-American. I mean, two-time first-team All-Big Ten was unanimous back in 2022 when she was an All-American that year as well uh, I, I told you just in terms of uh, the notes for Raina Terry if actually we're on the screen here if they zoomed into my sheet here you would see just lines and lines of notes about Raina Terry in a, a you know in a in a box much bigger than everybody else because I just needed so much extra room for everything that you know, seen her do over these years at Illinois. Well, when you consider that's your scouting report, imagine what the scouting <laughs> report looks like for teams that have to go against Illinois and Raina Terry. Hey, I gotta shrink the fonts just to be able to fit it all in there. <laughs> and right now, this is her eighth serve. Eight straight points for Illinois. And they'll get another one for Raina Terry. Randy Terry obviously picking up some aces, but it's this deep 
float serve that makes it so difficult. And then if an opponent is getting a pass, how good of a pass is it to be able to run the offense? 16 to four here in the second set as Randa Terry steadies herself. Whatever she's doing is working. Jesuits out of bounds. Jesuits trying to get the ball in play, do something to kind of get a side out here for the Scarlet Knights. The pass was a little bit better, but again, the predictability about where the ball's going to go, and then it leads to that Illinois block the hitter's trying to avoid. Terry continuing with the same routine, 10 times in a row, and a block by Philpott. Caitlin Schweighoffer, though, immediately saw something and is going to challenge. At 18 to four, see if we can pick up what she may have seen. I think maybe Phil Potts' left forearm hit the top of the net there. Yeah, I think you're you're pointing out the right part of what might have occurred. But one thing to point out was was it the ball that hit the net That's true. that made it look like it was the forearm? But those are things that they're going to look at in this replay as we get a really good view here. And oh, that no. was, nope, that was not pretty the ball. Pretty clear. <laughs> yep, pretty clear net violation there by Phil Potts. So that's going to reverse the point. It'll be 17-5, to five, and so the run will end at 10 straight for the Illini. Probably a much welcome side out for Rutgers as they work to kind of chip away at this deficit here. No surprises there, Scott. We have the reversal. So it's 17 to five. After 10 consecutive points for Illinois, coming on to serve is Allie Dutton, 5'4 freshman from Lafayette, Indiana. Lily Barry on the serve receive. Back row attack by Terry, and how about Hardison with the block? Hardison adding a little bit of uh, excitement here for the Scarlet Knights. Nice block of back row attack from Raina Terry, but now there's a question about whether or not Rutgers was in the net. So maybe almost the exact same situation here. Hardison was being really aggressive on that back row yep. attack, and so the, watch the forearms. No. Now, see, that case, I would argue that the ball might have pushed the net into Hardison's forearms. This one's a little bit harder to tell which motion came first. I don't see it hitting her forearms at all. The ball off the forearm. Let's just play a little bit longer if we can. Yeah, I don't see that net come back and hit Hardison. It's close. But obviously the ball goes off the yeah. forearm and then off the net, which may have given the illusion, illusion yeah. that it may have contacted Hardison as well. As Ashton Philpott and company are enjoying the tunes inside Huff Hall here. On top 1-0 uh, in 17-6 to for the time being here in set number two. Well, sometimes these challenges can change that momentum as this gets looked at. We saw Rutgers got that side out. Now a little bit of a delay in game with the challenge. So is there gamemanship there, or is it just trying to stop, or was there truly indeed factor? Initially, I thought Kaylin Schweighoffer, when she challenged, may have been just using it to get her team another timeout. But now she saw something specifically. Yeah. She wanted to challenge. Usually you don't see that until later in a match anyway, say in the third set or later. All right, decision has been made. And the They're going to say they were in the net. Hardison was in the net on the blade. So the call overturned as well. So back-to-back -back challenges. They get overturned on the exact same type of play. And so I, I can't tell where it not wasn't the arm, but... 18-5 Illinois, and Reagan Riley is serving. And Reagan Riley, a good hustle by Dutton to save this one for Rutgers. Hernandez, Deerstad with the up. And into the block. 
This time it's Bohm and Mosier for Illinois. So much has been showcased this afternoon by the block of Illinois, this time with Bohm and Mosier. You see Bohm reaching all the way, but Mosier was the one that terminated the block. And that eats up Visited, and that'll be an ace for Reagan Riley. Third ace of the day for the Fighting Illini. It's easy to point out the blocking by Illinois, but really it's the serving that's made it so tough for the Scarlet Knights to get their offense rolling. Hartman, no touch, out of bounds, and point to Illinois. Rutgers really needing a, a good pass here, being able to get the middles involved. Hardison has been able to show she can get the ball past the Illinois block. Riley switches it up on the serve. Hardison, Riley to the floor. And Hernandez tips it off of Hartman and Hardison. Hardison's been hitting really well this afternoon. You, a lot of times with the power, again, off of the block. Illinois 643 in this set, 395 for the match. Hardison rolls it over the net. Hernandez cross court to the floor. Dutton with the up. And cross court out of bounds on the attack by Robinson. Excuse me, by uh, Vicentine. You see the strong outside attack. It's just way outside. Probably the chance of trying to go off those high hands. And that's the effect a strong block can have on hitters. Trying not to get blocked, they'll go off of those high hands. But if there is one thing that's been super strong this afternoon for Illinois, it's been the serving. That's their fourth ace, but it's not just the ace, you know, it's not just aces that tell the story about serving. Another serve that gets Rutgers scrambling a bit. And that'll be a point for Uliana Yastrub, a freshman from the Ukraine. From Ukraine, excuse me. Another freshman for the Scarlet Knights that has been part of this youth and developing. Gets right past Boom for the kill. Hardison serves 24 6 Illinois in the second sets. Comes over for Bohm, and that'll wrap up the second set. 25-6 in the second set. And Illinois has a 2-0 lead. Fighting Illini dominant in the second frame, hitting 558, holding Rutgers to a negative hitting percentage, and they're below zero for the match. 25-18, 25-6. Third set is coming up next here on Big Ten Plus. The Scarlet Knights get back. Well, it's going to come back to serve receive as Illinois has been just serving it up so tough. And as you mentioned, Scott, it isn't just the aces, it's the difficulty of the serves as we look at some of the after two sets statistics 17 attack errors that's the block that Illinois is putting up and creating those attack errors and the hitting percentage for Illinois is 391 Rutgers at negative 0 1 6 and the blocks are 9 3 in favor of Illinois Raina Terry with 10 kills a couple of aces she had a she had 10 straight serves at one point in the second set, Alyssa Kinkilla leading the way for Rutgers with six kills. And again, it'll be interesting to see how Rutgers performs here. I, don't, I mean, we'll be honest, I don't think anybody has a imagination that Rutgers is going to make a full comeback in this match, but I think what you're looking for from them is that fight is a better performance in this third set. Remember, they got to play another match tomorrow, you know, two and a half hours north against uh, Northwestern, so they have to you know, stay locked in. 
But how about the play of Ashlyn Philpott? Today, she has seven more blocks. Yeah, she has just had a phenomenal year. And you look at sixth in the Big Ten with her hitting percentage. We've been talking about her blocking and defense side, but that 356 in hitting, that's a lot of work out of the middle, transitioning. She's doing it all along the net. Illinois will begin with the serve here in set three. Excuse me. Rutgers will begin with the serve. Served by Ali Borellis. Over by Laney Smith. Kinkilla. Good dig. Mosier to the floor. Terry gets blocked back. Terry and puts it through. The Rutgers block for her 11th kill. Just one error on the day. One thing that makes Raina Terry so special is understanding that cooperative volleyball piece. She had the block up the first time. She let her hitter coverage do their job, and then the second time goes up swinging using the block. Here's Martinez Mundo. Six digs today. She's had 22 matches this year with double figure digs, so may or may not get there today. And that goes long. 2 nothing Illinois. And these first few points are really going to set the tone for set three. Rutgers, after that second set, 25 to six, they're still looking to bounce back off of that second set. Another tough serve, but this time Natalie Robinson will get the kill from the middle, her third. And what was good about that for Rutgers was being able to do that middle transition. They want to be able to run Robinson out of the middle and get some quick points. Tips over the net and down for the ace. Lexi Vicentine with the ace. And you're already seeing a, a few positives coming off of that set two with the ace, the Robinson out of the middle. Team high 30th ace this season, and now a 31st for Visitine for Rutgers, and they now take a 3-2 advantage in the third set. They had a brief lead in each of the first two sets, 1-0. Mosier, back set to Smith, and there's the block. Jesuits with the help. Oh, that went out of... No, that is Point Rutgers. Natalie Robinson there as well, 4-2. to two. And this is huge, watching Jesuits get the block. They're defending the serve. These are important pieces to making this third set better. And the service error. You've been uh, impressed specifically by the freshman Avery Jesuits. Yeah, she has. She's got a nice, strong arm, quick to transition. We saw that hustle earlier going into the stands. She's all in for Mer for. Rutgers. Not too far away from that state. That East, that East Coast school. <laughs> <laughs> Similar team colors. Terry knocked over. Mosher. Philpot on the slide. Hits it errantly. 5-3 Rutgers. Well, this rotation, Brooke Mosier's in the front row, Phil Pot in the middle, Raina Terry on the outside. So a lot of weapons. Remember, Mosier can also take that second hit. She's been known to be pretty aggressive at times. Kenzie Deerstad with the serve. Hernandez on the serve, receive. And there's Raina Terry again. I feel like every time I see her play in person, there's a different wrinkle to, to one of her shots at some point that I haven't seen prior. Yeah, she just has really good vision, and you watch her. She can pound the ball away, but just the height right over the fingertips of the Scarlet Knight block. It really sold the, the big hammer swing until that last possible moment. Osher goes to Hernandez, and Rutgers gets it right back. It's 6-4. 
Scarlet Knights now with five block points to Illinois' nine. Well, so far right now, Kalen Schweighoffer and the Rutgers coaching staff have to be pleased with the way your team is coming out here in set three. Yeah, and Zora Hardison being a big part of that with the block of that last play, but she's been able to add some pressure to the hitters. Mosier over to Hernandez. To the floor went Jesuits. Hartman had it blocked, and they can't keep it alive. So, finding Illini gets side out. And back to serve goes Reagan Riley. Ten blocks today. Now for the finding Illini. That is 14 times in 27 matches. That's been double figure blocks for Illinois. Hartman. And she picks up the point. And a Hartman, sophomore from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, six foot two. Had three matches this year with double figure kills. Gonna look at this one here. Yeah, and sometimes Illinois being so good at blocking, going over that middle of the court, expecting a, a tough swing, and it just rolls right into the middle. Riley, a quick for Bohm, and Kari Bohm picks up the termination, her second today. You have to wonder after set two, Illinois siding out at 83%. Everything was going Illinois' way as far as the high hitting percentage, the side out. And this time Rutgers taking some time to get back into set three. And off the serve, it was a pretty good job by Deerstad, but tied up now at seven. Well, Brooke Mosier has that jump serve that can often score quite a few points, but you look at the Scarlet Knights, they have their own jump server, so they're used to the jump serve and being able to pass. Mosier, though, picks up back-to-back -back aces. Actually, they called the previous one not an ace. This one definitely, though. Illinois now leads 8-7. Hartman the attack. Here's Hernandez and Rutgers ties it back up. Rutgers has been able to get a few of their block points off of that deeper block. It's not the straight down block that sometimes you see and there's just nobody in hitter coverage sometimes when it goes to that deep corner. For Rutgers consistency that's been a big issue this year. Laura mentioned it earlier, 11 different starting lineups during the Big Ten season alone. Some injuries that they've had to deal with. But looking good here in the third set as Vicentine tools it off the block. And making quick points. That's going to be really important for the Scarlet Knights. A pass, a set, and a kill. Keep the rallies to a minimum. Illinois has the advantage with the blocking. Hardison with the service error. Rutgers with seven of those today with three aces. Illinois, one service error with five aces. Avery Hernandez on the serve. Having to reach back for that was Robinson. Terry directs it down the line and inbounds. Not only did Terry hit it down the line, she was looking to use the block off of those tall hands of the Scarlet Knights, and she just executes that really well. So if it didn't end up hitting hands, it was gonna end up inside the court. 13 kills now for Terry. Tip by Hartman, coverage by Smith. Terry cross court, the dig by Dutton. Vicentine, and the Illinois block once again earns them a point. 11 blocks this afternoon by the Fighting Illini, and it hasn't just been in the middle, it's been on this pin, and watch Bohm reaching to get the point. Illinois season high in three sets, 13 at Michigan when it comes to the blocks. Bohm with the middle attack, 
12-9, fighting Illini in the third as they're looking to regain control. So much pressure can be put on teams by quick middle transitions, and that's what Bohm did in that play, quick middle transition. Visitine on the serve receive. Now she'll attack, and that time, that's Robinson. Visitine with the kill, got shaded out here. I thought potentially that uh, Robinson went up and blocked the uh, block almost, but it was just off the block and down on the Illinois side. 12-10. Terry, and nothing taken off of that one for Raina Terry for her 14th kill. How about Brooke Mosier and how she sped up the tempo. Everything looked like it was going to the middle bone, being able to transition it. It was the same height all the way out to Terry for the termination. Here's Martinez Mundo who is up to 10 digs today, so 23rd time this season in double figures. Robinson has it blocked by Philpot with some authority. And then Philpot slides over to the pin where Terry is, and they combine for the point. The block can be so detrimental to the offense, and we are seeing that by the Scarlet Knights. Every time they have tried to get a pal past the block, it's been difficult for them. Illinois' full match high for blocks is 14. Did that in four, though, against Illinois State. Mosier over to Terry, and Raina Terry with her 15th kill. As I look through all my notes here to reference what I'm thinking, I'll look to Laura to, well, actually, we'll take a timeout first. And then when we come back, Laura can talk more about uh, Raina Terry and her ability. 15 to 10, Illinois here in the third set on Big Ten Plus. Important is that record versus the top 100 to have six victories. Uh, of course, you're playing so much tough competition with uh, the Big Ten schedule, and then that win over USC was so huge a couple of weekends ago. Yeah, that was a huge win for Illinois as they keep working hard, and even this match has impact. Can you beat this team in three? They're 0-16 in the conference, and so that momentum continues to go forward for Illinois. Well, the overpass visit team. What's also important to note is that, you know, a lot of times look at a profile, it says bad, you know, um, best win and a bad loss. Illinois does not have one of those this season because you know they have nine losses but well, the they're doing their job within the conference. The conference right. is so competitive it's the SEC of <laughs> volleyball as it is for football. Well the SEC might I guess argue with that but <laughs> well. but they're not listening. <laughs> Mosier with the feed over to Philpot, I was looking at this, you know, nine losses and seven of them are to teams that are currently in the top 25 for Illinois. Yeah, and Philpot is part of that success that Illinois has had out of their middles. When people ask about Illinois, what are some things that pop up? Their middle presence, the blocking, and the serving. 16-11 Illinois, now 17-11. Now they have tied their three set high for blocks with 13. And Philpot just barely getting a touch on the ball to end up with the block with that left hand extension. But it hasn't been all Illinois. In this third set, Rutgers University has picked up their side out percentage, 42% going into that last time out, compared to 20% out of set two. Again, yeah, for Rutgers, it's you know little things that you just want to see improvement upon, and this set specifically, and then moving on to the final three matches of the year. As there's Jesuits with the block, Jesuits with the solo block, and the slide can be one of the hardest hits to defend. So doing that solo, that's a huge block for Jesuits. It's her third block today. Game been averaging 0.4 per set. 34 total on the year. Mosier. 
Kinkilla into the double block. Rutgers has to play it over. Mosier to Terry. Oh, good job, Kinkilla. Hernandez the swing. Kinkilla, Barry with the up. Mosier hit it over, and Terry goes out of bounds. Point Rutgers. Kinkilla just working so hard on that right side against Terry, but I think we're going to see a challenge by Chris Thomas of whether or not that ball that went off at Terry ended up on the line. Yeah, you heard me. I hesitated on the call there because it looked fairly close to being on the line. Well, interestingly oh, enough, though, our top official is right next to the line. He was able to look down and see it. Yeah, it sounds like actually Chris Thomas is challenging potentially Rutgers being in the net. Aha, uh -huh. so we'll watch the replay. But everybody's kind of far away from the net, so. Maybe earlier. In the rally, you might have to look to see at some other plays at the net. For the time being, 17-14 Illinois. Rutgers getting awarded the point. Finding a line eye. Rutgers uh, hitting zero. Illinois hitting 300 for the match today. And so much of that hitting percentage really coming from set two and so much of the negative now above and positive has been from set two as we see another look. There could have been a little bit of drawdown from Kinkella. The pinky finger maybe? Because uh -huh, it was a rally. Remember the rally went on for a little bit between these two. And then the transition. And then we were assuming it was the last play, Scott, but this was actually about the second rally within the point. Well, the decision has been made, and you tend to note when this part happens that's usually uh, an Suspicious, overturn call. It? Yeah, <laughs> where there's maybe crossing out happening on the volleyball still has a, a handwritten sheet where, I mean, how many other sports still handwrite a lot of their stuff? I don't, I really can't think of any. But it is going to be an overturned call. So Rutgers deemed in the net. So it'll be 18 to 13. Reina Terry serving. This was a rotation that the Scarlet Knights struggled with in the set two. Reina Terry went on a long run. It's an understatement. Ten. Ten serves in a row. <laughs> I mean, I call long four or five. You're, you're, you're ecstatic if you get two or three, usually, as Brooke Mosier with the kill. And for Mosier, it's her third today. And she is such a strong setter, but not only because of her setting skills, but her ability to terminate the ball. 19-13, Illinois in the third. They're going to put their 18th win on the board and their 10th win in conference play before welcoming in at UCLA tomorrow night. That'll be a seven o'clock central time start as Caitlin Schweighoffer will call a timeout. That'll give us the time to look at this highlight. And then we, okay on selection day. They'll just yeah. be looking to see what seed they're gonna get. Well, Minnesota is a big match for both Minnesota and Illinois. They're in that tie and being able to break that and kind of set the tone as they finish out conference play. Yeah, right there bunched together. Minnesota at 10 and seven. Washington and Illinois both at nine and seven. Twenty-two, thirteen, Illinois in the third. And tomorrow night's match here at Huff Hall, seven o'clock Central Time start. So back to a normal start time. Jasowitz miss hits it. Well, this serve Raina Terry has, it has a lot of movement, drops at the end of the platform for the passer. And then obviously the, the pass predicting where the ball is going to be going as it's going out to the outside. 
for the Scarlet Knights. Kenzie Kogan is checking in to serve, replaced Raina Terry for this serve. Might be the, uh, could be the end of the night for Terry. See if she rotates back in. Hernandez. Hardison to the floor goes Barry, but point for Rutgers. Uh, Raina Terry, by the way, the 15 kills she has today, her 20th match this season with 15 or more. When you look at that Big Ten schedule and you think about how many times she has led Illinois in being able to terminate the ball and just the power she has. Served by Lily Bolin. So, Laura, you look at Rutgers. We've talked about Jesuits, the freshman, Natalie Robinson, freshman, Lily Bolin, a freshman in the starting lineup. Uh, Kenzie Deerstad, the libero, just a sophomore. Zora Hardison, starter in the middle, just a sophomore. As uh, Before I let you go here, Vivian Campbell has just checked in to serve. She hasn't played since the opening weekend of the Big Ten season. But for Rutgers, there's a lot of young pieces on this team that we've seen bright spots from as this match has gone on. Yeah, a lot of youth and definitely that development, getting a good spring season in, get through some of these injuries that they've been plagued with, and they're definitely going to be a different team looking next season. And yeah, they have a, a six foot four outside hitter, Emma Grubinov, who's been out all year, a freshman. That uh, I know Coach Schweighoffer is looking forward to having available in the spring and next season for this Rutgers team. Kinkilla uh, is a redshirt junior, but uh, sounded like that this is going to be her last year uh, at Rutgers. But Anna Hartman, a sophomore, Coach Schweighoffer mentioning her as someone that can fill, uh, fill that role moving forward. And again, she emphasized that the growth of the game in the, the, in the Piscataway, in the New Jersey area, uh, increased attendance at Rutgers games, that uh, this might be just a blip on the radar, hopefully, for this program. Yeah, and the positives coming out of that and looking at that growth. People are still excited about Rutgers volleyball, and, and that's important when trying to compete in this conference and get that youth excited. All right, Vivian Campbell will still be serving for the Illini. Campbell, the transfer from Cincinnati. Played there last year as a freshman. Jesuits sprawling to the floor. We got a whistle. And violation on Jesuits. So now it's match point for the Fighting Illini. And this serve has been really tough for Illinois, making some pressure once again for Rutgers to get a good pass and try and get Hardison the ball in the middle. And this win today for Chris Thomas will be his 90th win in Big Ten play as the head coach at Illinois. Kogan in the back. Hernandez, a good effort by Deerstad, but that'll wrap it up. And overall, that's Chris Thomas's 149th win as Illinois' head coach as they go to 18-9 and 10-7 and in the Big Ten with the 3-0 win over Rutgers. Setting up Illinois' matchup tomorrow with UCLA and Rutgers traveling on to take on Northwestern. With Laura for Illinois, three regular season games left. We showed you the profile that they have for the NCAA tournament, but they've got two more opportunities specifically coming up here at home tomorrow against uh, a UCLA team that, you know, isn't in the top half of the Big Ten standings, but still a very powerful offensive team specifically. And then, of course, the matchup with Minnesota on Wednesday. So a couple of instances where Illinois can really stamp 
there. Bro, 